Welcome to our ADM Lucid Automation Testing channel. We will have a series of talk about Selenium Automation Testing, which will help you better understand the basics of Selenium and also guide you to build your own Selenium Automation Project. You may access our test project and guide in the description below. Feel free to subscribe to our channel for any new videos and updates. In today's video, we will talk about data-driven testing. So data-driven testing is a software testing approach where test cases are designed based on different sets of data rather than fixed inputs. It involves executing the same test script with multiple data sets to validate the behavior of the application under various conditions. The purpose of data-driven testing is to increase test coverage, identify potential defects, and verify that the application functions correctly with different input values. So here are the benefits of data-driven testing. The first, there's improved test coverage. With a wide range of input data, more scenarios are covered, increasing the chances of finding defects. The second is re reusability. By separating test data from test scripts, Data sets can be reused across different tests, saving time and effort. The third advantage is scalability. It is easier to scale data-driven tests to handle larger data sets without modifying the test scripts. The fourth is maintainability. Changes in test data can be made independently of test scripts, making maintenance more straightforward. The fifth and final one is flexibility. Testers can quickly add new test data to verify additional scenarios. Data-driven testing is particularly useful when an application has a large number of test cases with similar functionalities and when there is a need to validate various combinations of input data. By adopting this approach, software testing becomes more efficient, effective, and adaptable to changing requirements. We will show you how to implement automation data-driven testing, our test data sets stored in two-dimensional arrays or CSV files or within a database. As we mentioned earlier, you can test from different sources of data. The first we mentioned was a two-dimensional string array. So here's an example of a two-dimensional string array. Within the array, there's another array. And in each array within the array, there is five fields to that. And this is the syntax for that. So if I wanted to add another, uh, another test case, what I would do is I would first I'd make a comment here. And then I would, uh, first I'll just do that. So this will be our new, uh, new test case here. So let me go to our website that we want to test. So we want to test golf courses. So if I go to here, uh, let's, for instance, I want to test, I want to add a different one. So I'm going to add this golf course right here. So I'm going to add the name. So this will be the first field. So remember, this is a string array. So we have to put brackets. So I do that. Uh, next, uh, we will add the second field, which is the address. So I'll just add the address. Copy that, and then I will paste that here. Third field will be the description. So I will copy the description, and then I will paste the description. The fourth field is uh, the email. So I will copy the email. I will paste the email and the final field is the phone number. So remember that each of these are strings. So you must put the uh, quotations around it. So I copy the phone number and then finally I will paste the phone number and this is our two dimensional string array with four different test cases in it. So now that this is done, I'm just gonna click save and then I will come down to our, uh, our, our test class. So here, we're just gonna test this. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna run Golf Chrome. So go to Golf Chrome, 
right click and then I will run Golf Chrome. And there you go, all four of our test cases have ran. Next, we will talk about reading data from a CSV file, which stands for comma separated values. So here's an example of a comma separated file. Um, here we have it, uh, I opened up in Excel, but uh, regularly what we would have is we would have a comma separating each field that we want to look at. And then these would all be strings. So Again, similar to last time, we have the golf course name, the address, the description, the email, and the phone number. So this class that we have, uh, the controller class here, search golf course from CSV, this is the class that, uh, this is the method that we created to deal with this. So uh, first, what we have is we loaded our CSV into our uh, into our directory and we have it here testdata.csv and with that we can read the csv within this method right here using csv reader after that we describe the csv basically and how we describe it is we say that the first field is going to be the golf name the second field is going to be a golf address the third field is a golf description the fourth the email the fifth is the phone number and etc after we finish that, what we do is we try to uh, we try to do a bunch of uh, commands with this information. So here we try to enter whatever golf name we have into the search text box, and then depending on if the test passes or fails, we send some information into the extent report afterwards. And same here, we do some other stuff uh, with the information we have as well, and ultimately that's what we get. So now I'm gonna try and run this. So I'm just gonna go down to Golf Chrome here. And this time I'm gonna comment out this one which was uh, using the to do array. And instead I'm gonna use uh, search golf course by CSV. So I'm gonna uncomment this one, I'm gonna save it. And then now I will run it. So I'm gonna run Golf Chrome. And the test has passed. Uh, and remember that we've been saving this extent reports into a local directory, so I can just open that up. Uh, what I'm gonna do is first go here. And so this test is the one we just ran for the uh, CSV, and we see that uh, the test passed and all 15 steps passed as well. Uh, I forgot to show you the one from earlier where we just ran it from a two-dimensional array. I'll open that up, and we see that they all passed as well. Next, we are going to look at running a test from a database. So on my screen here, I'm going to open out my SQL workbench. So in this, uh, this is what we use to prepare the database for the, the test that we want to look at. So under here, we create our own database called ADM. And under ADM, in the database under tables, we created a golf table. And in the golf table, uh, we have two entries right now, which is just our test data. So our first entry is golf vacations and our second entry is uh, a McClary golf course. And these contain the same fields as before, which is name, address, description, email, and phone number. So with this, we can go back to our code and uh, let me go to a controller class first. So I'm gonna go to our new, I'm gonna go first, what I'm going to do actually is I'm gonna go all the way up to the top and we notice here, uh, in order to run uh, using the database from MySQL, you have to import some new packages. So here we have SQL connection, SQL driver manager, SQL exception, SQL result set, and statement. And we are able to import these because again, we had to add new dependencies into our palm.xml file. So here we see our dependency, 
we added MySQL dependency uh, right here. So back to our controller class. Now we can look at our new method. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to go to our new method, which we named search golf course DB short for database. So first, there's a few things we have to notice. Um, one is that we have the URL for our database, which in, in our case right now is a local database. And then we have the username and the password. Also, let us go down and we will uh, come to here. We see that this, just notice that this is a string, this test data string is select all from the database uh, table, golf. And so this just establishes the connection to our database right here. And then we go here. And now what we do is we're gonna verify all, uh, we're gonna verify what we see on the website with what we find on the database. So here it says that if we have a connection still, we perform these actions. So under this uh, result set right here, we are basically getting, uh, we're using, we're executing this test data, which is basically grabbing everything from that uh, database table here. And then from the table, uh, we read each, uh, each line uh, separately. So reading the first line, for instance, we say that the first entry is the name, second is the address, the third is the description, the fourth is the email address, and the fifth is the phone number. And we do each test independently for each entry. So after we do that, uh, we'll basically clear the golf course and then we'll do it again. And then uh, we'll look at the next entry until there's no more entries. And at the end, we have to close uh, this result set. And then we also have to close our statements and the connection so that we can uh, make sure that there's a, so it's done. Uh, so now I'm gonna show you the test class. So you see under the test class, this time we're using search golf course DB. So just gonna save and then we can run this and we can show you what this looks like. I'm gonna run the golf course Chrome. That's the one that we have to run. So run that. And we see that it checked each field independently and the test passed. We can also go to our results here. I'll sort by the last time the date was modified into our test right here, so the golf one. And we see that our test passed and all 15 steps passed as well. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, this concludes our data-driven testing uh, video. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe and we hope to see you next time.